In this video, let's take a look at buttons in Material UI. MUI buttons are basically native button or anchor elements enhanced with Material Design. Let's begin by creating a new file in the components folder. MUI button.tsx. Within the file, I'm going to create a new component. Now to make use of MUI buttons, we need to import the button component. So import button from MUI slash material. The button component has three variants that we can use. Let's look at examples of each. First, we have the text variant. So button, opening and closing tags. The content is going to be text and we specify the variant prop and this is going to be equal to text again. Second, we have the contained variant. So variant is equal to contained, contained. And third, we have the outlined variant. Let's include this component in app.tsx, comment out typography component, and head back to the browser. You can see we have three variants of the button component. The text variant is typically used when you have to grab less attention in the UI. For example, in a card footer or the confirmation pop-up. The contained variant is used when you have to grab the user's attention and is used for primary actions in your application. An example is the register or login button. The outlined variant is sort of in between text and contained in terms of grabbing users' attention. They can be used for secondary actions in your application. An example would be the cancel or go back buttons. Now, the buttons currently are very close to each other. Let's head back to VS Code and add some spacing. First change in app.css on the app class, instead of text align center, I'm going to add padding for rem. Next, in MUI buttons component, we're going to import a component called stack, which Material UI provides for exactly the use case we have. So import stack from material. Ideally, stack is a component I would like to cover along with the other layout components, but we need it now, so let's use it. Import stack at the top, and now instead of wrapping with div tags, use the stack component. On the stack component, specify spacing is equal to two. Also specify direction is equal to row. This will lay out the children elements in a row with some spacing between the items. Take a look at the browser and you can see it is much better. Let's now take a look at the elements panel in DevTools. You can see the three elements are three HTML button elements. However, you can use the href attribute on the text variant. So back in VS Code, on the text variant, href is equal to https google.com. In this case, the button becomes a link and the underlying HTML element is now an anchor element. Head back to the browser and you can see the element is an anchor tag. Next, let's talk about button colors. In MUI, we have a predefined palette. Let me show that to you in the docs. Under customization, click on palette. Here, you can see there are six categories of colors. Primary, secondary, error, warning, info, and success. The values you see here are not the default palette colors though. To check the default colors, 
click on default theme and expand the palette object. Here you can see the main primary color and this is the color applied to our buttons in the UI. The button component can accept one of these categories of colors. Let's look at an example of each. I'm going to begin by wrapping the JSX with another stack component and add some spacing. Next, I'm going to add a new row stack with all the color variants of the button. So new row stack. And within the stack component, let's add the buttons. So button variant is equal to contained, color is equal to primary, and the text is primary. Similarly, I'm going to add variants for secondary, error, warning, info, and success. If we save the file and take a look at the browser, you can see all the color variants. Primary, secondary, error, warning, info, and success. Of course, you can change the default color palette and I will show you how to do that later on in the course when we talk about customizing the theme. I would also recommend you pause the video for a minute and change the variant to text and outlined and see how the color variants look. All right, next let's talk about size. For larger or smaller buttons, you can use the size prop. Let's look at an example. I'm going to create a new stack and this time we're going to set display is equal to block and spacing is equal to two. Direction will still be row. The display is equal to block is important as display flex is the default value and affects the size of the buttons. Now within the stack, add three buttons for three sizes. Button, the text is going to be small and for the props, Variant is contained and size is equal to small. The second button we set size is equal to medium and the third size is equal to large. Take a look at the browser and we see small, medium and large sized buttons. Next, let's see how to add icons. The Material UI has a icons library with close to 2000 icons that we can use. Let's begin by installing that library. In the docs, in the side nav, under components, click on icons. Here, copy the installation command and run it in your terminal. Yarn add at MUI slash icons hyphen material. This package gives us access to the icons set, which you can take a look at by clicking on material icons. I'm going to search for an icon called send and click on the icon. This gives me the import statement for the icon. Click to copy and paste it back in VS Code. Now, create a new stack and let's add the icon to the button component. Spacing is equal to two and direction is equal to row. 
add a button. The text is going to be send and variant is equal to contained. To add the send icon before the text, we can use the start icon prop. So start icon is equal to curly braces and we invoke send icon as a component. And to add the icon after the text, we can use the end icon prop. So make a copy, change start icon to end icon. Take a look at the browser and we see the two variants. Send with start icon and send with end icon. Now you might also want a button with just an icon and without any text. To create such buttons, MUI provides a second component called the icon button component. At the top, import icon button from material UI. In the JSX, wrap the send icon with the icon button component. Add an ARIA label for accessibility reasons. If you now take a look at the browser, you can see the icon button being displayed. The color and size prop are applicable on this component as well. So color is equal to success and size is equal to small. Take a look at the browser and we have a smaller green colored send icon button. Icon buttons are more appropriate for navigation bars where the regular buttons might look too pronounced. All right, next, let me walk you through two cosmetic props that you may want to disable based on your design system. At the moment, you can see that contained buttons are elevated and have a shadow. You can disable the elevation using disable elevation prop. Let's set it on the second send button. Disable elevation. If we head to the browser, you can see the difference between the second button, which now has disabled elevation and the first button with elevation. The other prop is related to the ripple effect when you click a button. When you click, there is a ripple effect as you can see. You can disable this using the disable ripple prop. Add it on the first icon button, so disable ripple. Head back to the browser and you can see there is no ripple effect when you click. Last but not the least, to handle the click event, use the on click prop. So on click, let's simply alert. Take a look at the browser and we see the alert dialog. So these are some of the details you should know about the button component in Material UI. Now we are not quite done with buttons. There are more variants of the button component that find usage in an application. Let's look at them in the upcoming videos.